In this part of the data structure course related to functions and argument passing, we will cover parameter passing by reference and recursive functions. Reference types. All the operations applied to the reference act on the object to which it refers. Here there is a declaration of an integer val, which is initialized as 10. Another declaration, ref file, is a reference to an integer, and it is initialized as val. That means that ref file is a reference to val. We can demonstrate reference as val was a variable, integer variable. When ref file is a reference, then it is representing the same integer. If we write integer pointer pi initialize with address of ref file because the address of ref file and val are the same. In fact, they are representing the same integer stored here. Then this line initializes pi with the address of val. So pi has address of ref file. So it is a pointer to this location, this item named as ref file. And it is also the item represented as val. So it is a pointer also to val. This is declaration of a reference to a pointer. Read from right to left, ref pi is a reference to a pointer to an integer. Ref pi is a reference to a pointer. So here we declared pi as a pointer here. Here ref pi is a reference to a pointer to an integer initialized as pi. Then pi and ref pi representing the same item, the same pointer, and it has the value address of ref pi, which is same as address of val. So ref pi is also pointing to val. If we write in this form, ptr is a pointer to a reference to an integer, and if we try to load the address of ref pi, this is useless. PTR is a pointer to a reference. However, the address of a reference is same as the reference variable. Therefore, instead of PTR pointer to a reference, we can simply use pointer PTR. There is no need for the reference as below. Integer PTR is a pointer and it is initialized with the address of ref by. Or it can be written equivalently, integer pointer ptr is initialized with the address of var. A pointer argument can also be declared as a reference when the programmer wish to modify the pointer itself rather than the object address by the pointer. The name of the function is prswap. We have two parameters again, and this is v1 is a reference to a pointer integer. And the second argument is the same. Here, note that this should be read from right to left. v1 is a reference to a pointer to an object type integer. In the function, we have integer temp v2. v2 is assigned v1. v1 is temp as before. And in the main part, we have i integer initialized 10, integer j initialized 20. We have pointer, which is 
containing address of i, pj is a pointer, containing address of j, and c out before swap star pi, this is a part of the string to be outputted, and star pi, this is corresponding to the content of the item pointed by pi, and then a string star pj, and the content of the item pointed by the pj, and next line. Then there is a call to the function prswap with the parameters pi and pj, which are these pointers. And then again, there is a output statement after swap and star pi, the content of the item pointed by pi, and string star pj, the content of the item pointed by pj, and line. When compiled and executed, we will have before swap star pi, this is the part of the string, and then we will see what is the content of the item pointed by pi, which is 10, and then we will have star pj, the output, and the content of the item pointed by pj, which is 20, and it passes to the next line. And after swap, we will have star pi, the content of the item pointed by pi is now 20, and star pj, and the content of the item pointed by pj. Return from prswap destroys v1, v2, and tap. If we trace the code, this is the code that we considered just in the previous slide. In the main part, we have declaration integer i initialized with 10, integer j initialized by 20. So the memory is reserved for i and j, and the contents are 10 and 20 by the initialization. And then pointer pi is declared and its content is address i, so it's pointing to item i. And pj is created, it's a pointer and the content is address of j, so it is pointing to item j. When the function PR swap is called, where we have the parameters reference to pointer v1, reference to pointer v2, and these are called by the PI and PJ. So here by this line, v1 and v2 are created. In fact, they are references to PI and PJ. So no extra memory is reserved, and they are representing the same items, PI and PJ. Because of that, the content of V1, which is a reference to PI, is address of I, and the content of V2 is address of J. Then temp which is a pointer to integer, is initialized by v2. So, because v2 is address of j, temp will have also address of j, so it's a pointer to j. And then v2 is a signed value v1. This is v2, whatever the value here is copied to that location. So, here we will have address of i, this value is copied here. And also v1 is a signed value temp because temp was address of j, the content of v1 becomes address of j. In fact, the content of pi and pj, because v1 and v2 are references to these variables, becomes address of j and address of i after execution 
of these two lives. And then there is a return from PR's web. So V1, V2, which are the variables as parameter, and also the one declared here are destroyed. They are no more available. V1, V2, and temp are destroyed. And notice that before calling PR's web, the content of PI was address of I, and the content of PJ was address of J. After execution of the PR's web, now this is containing address of J, and PJ is containing address of I. So this is a pointer to J, PJ is a pointer to I. At the output, we will see before swap, star PI, the content of the item pointed by PI is 10, so we will see 10 here, and then star PJ is a string, and the content of the item pointed by PJ, which is 20. And then this is executed, mm -hmm. and at the output we will see, after swap, star PI, all these are string, content of the string to be outputted, and then we see the content of the item pointed by PI, which is 20. We will see 20 at the output, and then star PJ column, and then the content of the item pointed by PJ, which is 10. We will see 10 at the output. Here there are various declarations and usage of pointer. If we have a declaration such that constant integer pointer P is a pointer to a constant, then Assigning value to the pointer itself is all right. However, if we are going to change the content of the item pointed by P, it is not allowed because it is constant. Integer pointer constant P. A constant pointer, this is constant, P is constant. It is not allowed to change the content of the pointer itself. However, it is allowed to change the content of the item pointed by the pointer. It is allowed. However, if both are constant, that is constant integer pointer constant p, a constant pointer to a constant, it is not allowed to update the content of the pointer itself. And also, it is not allowed to update the content of the item pointed by P. If it is declared as constant integer reference P, that means that reference to a constant, then updating P is not allowed because it is a reference to a constant which cannot be updated. Integer reference, constant P, constant reference. In fact, this is useless. A reference is already a constant. You cannot change shortcut. Now we are going to consider recursive functions. Some calculations have recursive character. For example, n factorial, which is given by the formula, n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. So in the calculation of n factorial, we are using the calculation of n minus 1 factorial. To be able to implement this kind of functions, we write functions that call themselves. Such functions are called recursive functions. An example is the recursive factorial. The name of the function is factorial. We have a parameter n, integer n, and the factorial of n will be calculated. It will return the result, which is also an integer. The code is as follows. 
if n is greater than 1, then it will return n multiplied by factorial n minus 1. Notice that in the function factorial itself, we have a call to the function factorial. It's calling itself with parameter value n minus 1. And we have also an S case. If n is not greater than 1, in that case, it returns 1. For any recursive function to execute in finite time, we need such a part which is not calling itself. Here, it is calling itself, but here it is not called. If there were not such a part without calling itself, in that case, it would always call itself, so there would be an infinity call to the function itself. Let the function factorial be called with parameter 3. For example, there may be such a code, x is a signed value, factorial 3. Then there is a call to the function factorial, factorial 3. Here, the value of n is equal to 3. We are checking if n is greater than 1, so it is correct. It will return and multiply by factorial n minus 1. And here, notice that n is greater than 1, so here n is 3. 3 is to be multiplied by the result of the factorial n minus 1. Here there is the call to the function itself. This time n minus 1 is 2. There is a call to the function with argument value 2. This is to calculate what is factorial 2. Again, it is checked if n is greater than 1, this is true, it will return n, which is 2, multiplied by factorial n minus 1, which is 1. Here, in this part of the code, there is a call to the factorial with parameter 1. So here n is equal to 1, n is no more greater than 1, so the second part is to be executed, it directly returns 1. So 1 returns from this call, and it is replaced by this part of the code factorial and minus 1. Factorial 1 is replaced by 1. And was 2, 2 multiplied by the result of this factorial 1, which is 1, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, so this part is returning 2 to the calling part. So this factorial n minus 1, which is factorial 2, is replaced by 2. This is the return value. It is replaced by the return value. And n is 3 here. 3 multiplied by 2 results in 6. This function is returning at this point. So it returns 6. Then the value of x becomes 6 when the statement x factorial 3 is executed.